Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Tarek Farouk, and I welcome you all to this third and final session of the Oracle VM Cloudathon at Brain Surface. Uh, before I begin, we're going to recap the first two sessions and talk a little bit about what we have covered so far. The first uh, session, in the very first session, we covered two main topics, cloud computing with Oracle and Oracle VM, and the role that Oracle VM plays in the global cloud computing picture uh, as far as Oracle's um, strategy is concerned with cloud computing paradigms and technologies. So uh, I'm, we're going to recap a little bit about Oracle VM, uh, its architecture, its different components, uh, what is the, what, are, what are the requirements to get it up and running, and so on and so forth. So um, all the material, just to summarize, all the material, the multimedia content, the documents, everything is available at Brain Surface after this presentation is over, uh, including uh, the audio as well as the multimedia content. Um, also, uh, I want to iterate that this series of uh, webinar sessions has focused and concentrated on Oracle VM for x86, not Oracle VM for Spark. So, okay, so let's talk a little bit about Oracle VM. Uh, we did we did already cover uh, a little bit in detail about what Oracle VM is. What are the different components? What is the architecture? Um, how is how to get it up and running? We'll, we'll summarize it uh, before we get going uh, today. So, so this is a little bit about me. I've been involved with various Oracle technologies for about 16 plus years, and I'm an Oracle ACE and Oracle RAC certified expert. You can uh, read more about me at brainsurface.com. <coughs> Excuse me. So Oracle VM is based on Zen. Uh, Zen is a free open source hypervisor and is the de facto industry standard uh, for x86. Zen is Linux-based and is notably used and deployed by Amazon EC2, which is the dominant market leader in cloud computing. All key products are certified and supported on Oracle VM. Oracle VM supports the Solaris, Linux, and Windows family of operating systems and is very fast, uh, almost close to near native performance because of its uh, relatively low overhead. So what is virtualization? A virtualization is a virtual media monitor or a hypervisor as it's known basically allows you to emulate and run operating system kernels and coexist with each other uh, on top of the hypervisor, which is the lowest level of the technology stack and sits on bare metal hardware. Two types of hypervisors, type 1 and type 2, notable difference between the two is that the first one sits on bare metal, whereas the second one resides on existing OSs. Greatest benefit, greatest feature, greatest advantage of virtualization is um, consolidation, resource consolidation, and greater, greater re resource consumption and efficiency. So what is, what is per para-virtualization? Para-virtualization in its simplest form is where the guest VM sort of piggybacks and uses a special hypercall ABI or an application binary interface 
um, for performance, mainly for performance reasons. Full virtualization or native virtualization, as it's called by uh, certain vendors, requires CPU support and it's kind of generally relatively slower than para virtualization. This is a little bit about Zen, its synopsis, its uh, genesis, uh, its origination. Uh, and you can read more about, you can learn more about Zen, which Oracle VM is based on uh, at zen.org. <coughs> Excuse me. So this diagram uh, depicts uh, typical Oracle VM or Zen architecture. As you can see on the top left corner, we have <coughs> device drivers for para virtualization or device emulation, uh, which basically represents the management and control, which basically sits on the management and control domain, also referred to as DOM0. Uh, that's the very first domain, uh, which is also used for housing the software binaries for the hypervisor. Uh, which are basically responsible for the coordination management of various resources and the guest VMs or DOM U's as they're uh, interchangeably called, uh, which are shown on the right side, um, all of which sit on the hypervisor, um, which basically is responsible for communication to and fro from the various resources on the bare metal hardware, such as C CPU, memory, I.O., et cetera. Again, these are some benefits, advantages, uh, mainly of which the main advantage is, again, consolidation and greater resource consumption and efficiency. So Oracle VM is is a great suite. It has a wide variety of features and has a rich and dense um, feature set and supports a bunch of different um, functionality. Uh, including P2V and V2V, which is also known, well, which is which stands for physical to virtual and virtual to virtual conversion of your existing virtual machines in other hypervisors such as VMware. So if you have VMware, you can easily migrate to Oracle VM using these utilities and tools, uh, thereby saving you know a license costs because Oracle VM is free. Uh, you only pay for support. So three main operating system families supported by Oracle VM are again Windows, Linux, and Solaris. This diagram is important uh, as relates to our today's session. Uh, the exercises and the demos that we're going to go through today. Uh, so I may come back to this uh, in the future. Uh, during the rest of the session, but let me go through the different components, different um, pieces of the puzzle here as far as the Oracle VM architecture is concerned. So at the bottom part of the diagram, you can see the Oracle VM server, uh, which houses your hypervisor, which sits at the lowest level of the software stack. On top of the hypervisor, there is your DOM0, which also acts as your boot partition which basically contains all your software binaries for Oracle VM or Zen and is responsible for coordination and management of all your guest VMs, which are the three DOM U's uh, as they're interchangeably known. So DOM U's are also known 
as guest VMs and vice versa. Up at the top part, you will see the second component of Oracle VM, which is Oracle VM Manager, which is a Java-based server with a web-based UI. Uh, and it requires your Oracle VM agents, which are demons and processes that reside on all the Oracle VM servers, um, for management uh, of your Oracle VM architecture. So Oracle VM, to summarize, consists of two different components. The Oracle VM servers, which are the actual hypervisors or virtual machine monitors, and your Oracle VM manager component, which is responsible for management. Now, technically, you can live just with Oracle VM servers and use your command line Zen um, commands to basically manage and run your Oracle VM. But Oracle VM manager is a great uh, and rich feature set component, and it makes your life a lot easier. So it's highly recommended to use both. This is a list of all your certified guest VMs. Uh, as you can see, again, the three main operating system families are Linux, Windows, and Solaris, uh, which may not be here because it's a recent addition. So again, to summarize, Oracle VM has two main components, the server component, which is your actual hypervisor, and the Oracle VM manager, which is the management component. We already went through a detailed and comprehensive set of exercises in the last session, uh, which basically, in which we basically installed Oracle VM server uh, and configured it, and then installed and configured the Oracle VM manager and integrated both the components. So Oracle VM server installs on bare metal x86 hardware and does not require a pre-installed operating system. It already does come with a bare bones pared down uh, version of Linux called Linux Juice as it's pronounced or just enough OS. And it boots a small domain called DOM0 which is basically housing all your hypervisor software binaries and is responsible for your coordination of various resources between your guest VMs or DOM users they're called. Again, this is a this is the same diagram. This is another version of the same diagram that we just saw in which on the right hand side you can see three guest VMs. Uh, two Linux guest VMs and one Windows hardware virtualized guest VM sitting on top of the hypervisor and managed by DOM0. Oracle VM Manager is a Java-based management server. It's a great tool and it greatly enhances your productivity. Oracle VM Manager basically Oracle Within Oracle VM, all your Oracle VM servers are grouped together logically into what's known as server pools. These server pools can, can be high availability or HA enabled, which basically allows us to perform HA functions such as live migration, uh, failover, and so on and so forth, uh, which we will practice uh, today as part of the exercises. This is another version of, this is another diagram showing the entire architecture. As you can see on top, there is the Oracle VM Manager, which is responsible for managing all, managing as well as administering all your Oracle VM servers, which are your actual hypervisors. 